Hi guys, welcome to lesson two, lecture one. Today is all about series circuits. And the, the concepts aren't all that tough. It's basically Ohm's law with some twists thrown in. Uh, so this is all about chapter four, which is all about series circuits. And the items that we're covering in chapter four, though not necessarily in this order, is why is current the same in a series circuit? The total resistance equals the sum of all the resistances. Voltage equals the sum of all the IR drops. We're going to look at Kirchhoff's voltage law. We're going to talk a little bit about polarity. And we're going to cover these other little little bits and pieces here too as, as we go along. So just jumping right on into it here. A series circuit. Now we've already looked at the most basic of series circuits and, and let me throw a new page in here and that is where we have a voltage source, a resistance, and a path for current flow. This is a series circuit. You're, you're current path goes directly in one path from negative to positive through a resistance. Now another way of looking at this resistance can be multiple resistors. Okay, now you have a network of resistors and they are once again joined in series. That is, there is a single current path for current to flow. We've got no branches, we've got no, no other way around, it's just this one path. So these two resistors are effectively a single resistance. Let's get on with the slideshow. <clears throat> and all right, so a series, a series network or a series circuit has four basic characteristics. Number one, the total resistance is equal to the sum of the individual resistance values. So in our previous picture here, oops. There we go. In our previous picture, let's say R1 is 2 ohms and R2 is 3 ohms. That makes this resistance 5 ohms. It's as simple as that. Now you still have just a single voltage source and a single path for current to flow. So that is going to, uh, well, that fact is going to come in handy in just a moment, and we'll get on with that. Okay, the total resistance is equal to the sum of the individual resistances. At the same time, the current is the same everywhere in the series circuit. Well, once again, you have a single path for current to flow. No side paths, no, no anything. So that single path means all the uh, electrons in this path, the, the charge has got to move at the same rate, which means current has got to be the same in all parts of the circuit. And I'm not asking you to take my word for that. Mathematically, it's going to work out the same, and I'm going to demonstrate it here in just a moment also. <coughs> so current is the same everywhere in the circuit. Well that means that the total voltage, if you have the same current, <coughs> if you have the same current and each resistor has its own value and Ohm's law 
remains voltage equals current times resistance, well then each one of these resistors is going to drop a specified amount of voltage. It's what we call an IR drop or a voltage drop. So R3 is going to have the voltage of R3 and R2 or R1, <coughs> pardon me, R2 is going to have a specific voltage drop and R1 is going to have a specific voltage drop and the total of voltage drop of R1 and R2 has got to equal the total voltage being provided. And that's what this next section is saying. The total voltage is equal to the sum of the IR voltage drops, that is the individual resistance voltage drops, across the individual resistances. Now this IR actually means current times resistance or you can just say voltage drop across the individual resistances which means if each resistor has its own own voltage drop and each resistor has constant current that means each resistor is going to have a different power dissipation so the total power dissipation is equal to the sum of the power dissipated by each resistance. So just to recap of the four characteristics, total resistance is the sum of the individual resistances. Current is the same in all parts of the circuit. Total voltage equals the sum of the individual voltage drops for each resistor. And the power is the sum of the power dissipated by each resistor. So there's our quick picture. <coughs> All right. So when a series circuit is connected across a voltage source, the free electrons must drift through all the series resistance. And there is only one path for the electrons to flow. So if there are two or more resistances on the same current path, the total resistance across the voltage source is the sum of all resistances. And what they're saying is basically what I said earlier. Here we have a single current path with a total of 3 ohms of resistance. Here we have that same voltage source and we add a 2 ohm resistor giving us a total resistance of 5 ohms. This circuit can be simplified down to that term. So it's just like saying you have a single 5 ohm resistor. When we're simplifying circuits, whether it be a series circuit or a parallel circuit, this is the form we're going to try to get it down to every time for our analysis. We're going to try to get it down in terms of a single resistance and then expand from there to find all our other values later on. Uh, you'll especially see this in chapters 5 and 6. All right, so I have got this circuit. In this circuit, I have the same 3.9 K ohm resistor that we were playing with the last time. And to that, I've added three more resistors. One at 3 K ohms, one at 2 K ohms, and one at 1 K ohm. Now, give or take their, uh, their individual tolerances, we're going to come out in the range of about 10 K ohms here. So I'm going to give it R is about 10 K ohms. And I have a voltage source in the range of 5 volts. 
So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn this guy up and we're going to check the resistance from there to there. Essentially saying we are going to check the values of all these resistors all at once. So let me bring up my, my camera here real fast. And make sure it's at a size that we can actually get into our recording. All right, so I will turn these guys on, bring my ohm meter down into the 20k ohm range, and isolate the circuit from my power. So what I'm seeing here is about 10.38 k ohms. And the way I'm measuring it is my my black lead, my negative lead is tied to my ground post and my positive lead, my red one, which happens to be right here, is connected to the end of my 3.9 k ohm resistor. So electrically, I'm testing from this end to this end. And once again, I see 10.39 K ohms. So real quickly, I'll come over here and 10.39 K ohms. All right, now I'm going to fire up my voltage source and we're going to look at the voltage while we're at it and we're also going to take a current measurement for the circuit. So fire that guy up, bring this meter back to a voltage scale and now I'm, I'm bringing my voltage source through the positive lead of my current meter. The negative lead of my current meter is then tied into my circuit and then current is going to flow from negative to positive. So I now want to bring up my camera again. All right, connect my voltage source and my voltage source is actually 4.94 volts. So let me see about getting back in here. So if we now follow Ohm's law, And since we're doing this for the entire circuit, we should also add the subscript T for total. So my total voltage is 4.94. My total resistance is 10.39K. So my current should equal and for this, we'll minimize that and bring up a calculator here real quick. So I've got 4.9, try that again, 4.94 volts divided by 10,390 ohms equals 4.75 millivolts or 4.75 here I'll bring that into the camera shot there we go 4.7547 or 4571 times 10 to the negative fourth so that's 0.48 roughly uh, milliamps 
So now bring my camera back into the shot and what we see here is 0.48 milliamps. So the circuit agrees with the math. Now that said, coming back to our display here, whoops, don't want to get rid of all that, just that part. That said, I now want to test the rest of the characteristics, at least as far as the resistance goes. So first, I've got 0.48 milliamps or 480 microamps and I have a resistance at R1 of 3.9 K ohms. So I should have a voltage and this is actually about 4.2 K ohms. So what we'll do now is we will pull the current meter out of the circuit for the moment. We're going to isolate the uh, current meter from, or isolate the circuit from ground at the moment. Okay, and bring the camera back up. There we go. Whoops. There we go. Now what I've done is I've hooked what was my current meter here. He is now set for 20 K ohms. And I've gone straight across this resistor. And I'm seeing it's reading 4.14 K ohms. So we'll take that out. 4.14. Because this point right now is actually open. I've got no path for current to flow. I've essentially isolated this resistor and all these other resistors from my voltage source and from the ground point. So I am just measuring resistance across those two points there. So that gives me 4.14 K ohms. Now I'll go ahead and I'll measure across R1, R2, and R3. This is R0 by the way. So bring the camera back up so you can watch this. Moving my leads again. That 3K ohm resistor is actually 3.12K. Now you'll notice my 2K ohm resistor, once I get the camera back up, is very close because this guy is a precision resistor. That's one of those film type res resistors that we were working with. So it is 1.99 K ohms. And finally we'll go go across the 1K. Whoops. 
try not to do that again. And it is a 1.1 K ohm resistor. <coughs> so if we do the math, this gives us 7.26 and 2. 7.26 that gives us 9.26 uh, that's actually 9.25 and 1.1 10.35 so about a difference of 40 ohms which I can I can write off to the wires and everything I've got connected from from this point and this point and the the, the poor mechanical connections so we'll write off 40 ohms. So anyway, we see that we're pretty darn close just on our basic resistance measurements. So now I'm going to go back and look at voltage drops. Because we've already seen that our meter here is showing us 4.94 volts and that meter is reading straight across our voltage source. Now each one of these resistances once again it's going to have its own voltage drop because each one has an individual resistance and a common current. So now I'll do a quick bit of math. And that is four point oops four one four zero that's four point one four K times point zero 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 four eight or four hundred and eighty microamps which equals one point nine eight seven two so pretty close to 2 volts should drop across this resistor. <coughs> Let's see here. So now we'll get that meter set back up for 20 volt scale and we will connect the power supply. And I am measuring backwards. I don't have my lead set up properly here so let's get positive on the positive side negative on the negative reference side series resistors do have polarity and basically that says the lead that is closer to the positive side is your positive side the lead that is connected closest to your negative side or connected closest to a ground point which we'll go into in a bit is your negative side So, in electron flow, where the electrons enter is your negative side, where they exit is your positive side. In conventional flow, it's just the opposite. But we're not that worried about conventional flow, so we're going to ignore that statement for now. All right, my voltage here was 1.98 is what I'm reading now, and let's come back and show you that. All right, positive connected there, negative connected there. Voltage coming in on the white wire, <clears throat> and my meter, once again, is connected across the resistor, and I get 1.98 volts. And my calculation said I should have about 1.9872, or closer to 2 volts. But that measurement giving my tolerance for the meters and, and everything else in here not a bad measurement whoops and I hit that thing again all right let's go ahead and look at the voltage drops the rest of the way through let 
let's see, volt, voltage there was 1.98. I keep pressing the button on my pen here and making funny numbers. 1.98. Voltage here is 1.49. That's on R1 then, or the 3K ohm. one point four nine volts and go ahead and turn that one back on just for grin so we see the whole thing again and our voltage our regulator has gone up a little bit Voltage drop across our 2K is at 0.95. And then voltage across the 1K is at 0 0.53. <coughs> Alright, <clears throat> so let's then calculate and see how close we're coming to the actuals. So three one two zero times point zero 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 four eight. Let's store that one. Equals one point four nine seven six. One point four nine, that's a pretty close close look. One point four nine 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 zero times memory recall equals 0.9552 well 0.95 that's pretty close and 1.1 K times the current 0 0.528 0 0.53 I'd say that's pretty darn close so looks like our math and our meter readings are coming out to be the same or pretty darn close to being the same so series resistance we can see if we add these up we are going to be within tenths of a volt of what we're reading on meter one which currently is well it's gone up 5.01 so my voltage regulator here is fluctuating just a little bit. And we're seeing changes in the, uh, the uh, actual difference in current, which is going to give a slightly difference in voltage drop across each resistance. The one thing we know is each resistance is not changing. So what we just did is we got rid of our current meter there, we left our voltmeter there, and we varied the position of our voltmeter across each resistor to get each individual uh, voltage drop. Each of those voltage drops, once again, if we were to do the math, we would find that they're going to equal the... Uh, the total voltage or what we're reading here on meter one because once again current has only one path to go this path through the meter is negligible this meter is up in the mega ohm range which means it's barely even seen by the circuit 
So this path is negligible. It, it really doesn't make any difference at all to us. Same thing will be for this path. This is the only path that matters in our series circuit. And current is going to remain the same. That means each one of these voltages, according to Ohm's law, each individual resistance has got to have its own voltage drop. Those voltage drops have got to equal the source voltage. At the same time, the sum of these resistances, if I was to put another Ohm meter, Some of these resistances has got to equal the total resistance. And those are the major characteristics of a series circuit. If you get those down to where they are second nature, you will have absolutely no idea going forward in DC theory. Okay, now individual resistances, we give them a subscript. Resistance R1, resistance R2, resistance R3. When we start talking about totals, well, we can go back to the total for Ohm's law. So, Resistance for R1 is going to equal the voltage drop at R1 over the current. The resistance at R2 is going to equal the voltage drop at R2 over the current. Remember, current is constant. The voltage drop at R3 is going to equal the voltage, or pardon me, resistance at R3 is going to equal the voltage drop at R3 over the current. That's just the way it works. The total resistance in a series circuit is going to equal the total voltage drop or the voltage at the source over the current. And remember this current is equal to all these currents. All right, now I've already explained this, the next part, several times. So current is the movement of electronic charge between two points. There's a continuous single path. So all the electrons have the same speed as those leaving the, the voltage source. Therefore, current is the same in all parts of a series circuit. Are we going to take that at face value? Well, heck no, we're not going to take that at face value. <clears throat> We're going to go back to our camera again. So, while I'm stand sitting here not getting there yet, I'm resetting my camera to, or my, my leads. There we go. And I'm bringing my camera back up. There we go. And now we are back to seeing the current. All right. Our current is here on the left-hand meter. So our resistance hasn't changed. Our voltage, yeah, it's varied a little bit. And we can see our overall current reading is is fluctuating a little bit. But once again, that is the the tolerances of the equipment. Let me make sure I've got everybody back where they belong and everything like that. All right, I can't get out any further in decimal places on this meter, so I don't know if that's 0.479999 or what. <coughs> 
Um, I'm sure it's close to being 0.48. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the voltage meter from the circuit. So the voltmeter is now out of the circuit. I'm going to reset it to be a current meter. And I'm going to open a path in my series circuit. Now, I don't know how well you can see, but you can see there's each resistor in the line, and then in front of it, there's a jumper. And you can't really see that one very well. But I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull this center jumper out here. So now I don't have a continuous circuit. You see that my my current has dropped to zero because I've now got an open circuit. I've got no place for current to flow. But now I'll hook up my current meter and fill that gap. So I've placed a current meter right there and the current meter becomes part of the circuit and allows current to flow. You'll get to learn more about that in chapter 8. So here I've got a current meter there, I've got a current meter there, and I've just removed my voltmeters for the moment. And what you can see is the fact that my current is the same on the two meters. One is taking into account the entire circuit. This guy right here. It is measuring the current leaving the circuit and going back to the voltage source. Whereas this one is dead center in the circuit. And indeed they both have the same current. So current is the same in all parts of a series circuit. I think that pretty well covers that portion. Let me turn that off, get it out of the way. All right, series current formulas, well, there really isn't because the total current is equal to the individual currents. And once again, total current is equal to the total voltage over the total resistance. <coughs> and I'm not going to bother with that because we have already covered that many times now. Okay, series IR drops. Well, we've pretty well covered this now too. So by Ohm's law, the voltage across the resistance equals current times resistance. So in a series circuit, the IR voltage across each resistance is called an IR drop or a voltage drop because it reduces the amount of potential difference available for the remaining resistances in the circuit. All right, let's come back to this picture. The R3, the 1K ohm resistor, had a voltage drop of 0.53 volts. What that basically says is if we are measuring from this point then to this point, we are going to see 5 volts minus the 0.53. The negative reference has now been raised up to this point and it's 0.53 volts higher than it would have normally been. 
So that would make this from point A, B, C, D, E to point E. if it was a 5 volt system. It drops 0.53 volts, so we're going to measure 4.47 volts from point A to point E. Because this resistor has dropped the other 0.53. And it will remain the same. You know, the, the, the difference will, will be accounted for by the individual resistance drops. So if I measure from point B to point E, I'm going to be measuring 5 volts minus the R1 resistor drop, or R0 resistor drop, pardon me, which we saw was 1.98 volts minus or plus the 0.53 volts. So it'll be the 5 volts minus the 1.98 minus the 0.53, which is, uh, let's see here, 2 point, a little bit less than 2.5. <clears throat> that is measuring where this meter is here. So what the heck, let's just go ahead and measure where that meter is there. going to take that. I'm going to find my jumper again real quick. Reinstall it to the circuit and we're going to do this. I'm working with the, the camera at the moment. Give me just a moment. There we go. Time to bring camera back up. All right, the jumper is reinstalled. <coughs> I'm going to set back up for voltage on my other meter up to the 20 volt scale. And now let's measure the center two resistance, the voltage drop across the center two resistance, I should say. And it is 2.35 volts. So measuring measuring across R1 and R2 here, I end up with 2.35 volts, which is my source voltage minus the voltage drop of R1 and the voltage drop of R3, pardon me, R0. I really got to relabel this. So that's the voltage minus the voltage across R0 minus the voltage across R3. Equals the voltage drop across R1, R2. <coughs> Now, what good is all of this? Well, what good is the good that it provides is it allows us to create a network where we can have one main voltage source and then tap off voltages at the levels that we need them in other circuits. So we don't necessarily have to have a 2.5 volt supply. All we have to do is set up a network that'll cut this guy down in half and we can tap 2.5 volts off to go over here, 2.5 volts to go over here, or the whole 5 volts to feed a third circuit. 
So that's what good these series resistances are, and this is what is known as a voltage divider. And we're going to be talking a lot more about voltage dividers. You're actually going to design one in Chapter 7. So that'll be in the next lesson. All right, so current the same. Your voltage IR series IR drops. The sum of the IR drops equals the total voltage. Let me make sure I kind of keep everything where it belongs here. There we go. We talked about polarity of the IR drops. So your resistors do have a polarity depending on where they're connected. So electron flow, which is the one we concentrate on, where the electrons go in is your negative side, where they come out is your positive side. Doesn't matter what point in the series circuit it is, just remember that aspect, you're fine. Uh, series IR drops, we're doing this again. So you got your 10 volt source, a 6 ohm, 10 volt source, 10 ohms of resistance, going to give you 1 amp of current, and that 1 amp of current is going to show you that across the 6 ohm resistor, you're going to have a 6 volt drop. Across the 4 ohm resistor, you'll have a 4 ohm drop, and the total of those two drops has got to equal your 10 volts. I don't believe in beating a dead horse too many times. Uh, polarity, we've already talked about polarity. Okay. I keep talking about this. The, the sum of the IR drops equals the total voltage. Well, that was figured out by our good old friend Kirchhoff. And this is Kirchhoff's law. Kirchhoff's voltage law states total voltage in a series circuit equals the sum of the voltage drops. And it happens to be the third characteristic of a series circuit. Um, Kirchhoff did a lot of theorizing in electronics even before there was any electronics and we use Kirchhoff's voltage law, Kirchhoff's current law. In chapter 5 we'll be talking about Kirchhoff's current law. So we'll keep going. By the way, this is a modified version of your, your chapter 4 uh, PowerPoint and it is available in instructor notes on Blackboard. So you're welcome to go ahead and download that any old time you want. All right, total power. Well, it should follow that if individual resistors have got a voltage drop and they have current flow going through them, then they are going to have an individual power dissipation. So in this case, you've got two amps of current. R1 is 10 ohms, therefore in a 60 volt circuit, 10 ohms at 2 amps is going to drop 20 volts and if you're dropping 20 volts at 2 amps then therefore you're going to have a power dissipation in that re individual resistor of 40 watts. Down here at R2 is at 20 ohms and 20 ohms with 2 amps flowing through it is going to drop 40 volts and 40 volts at 2 amps of course is going to be an 80 watt power dissipation. So each individual resistor is going to dissipate its own amount of power. Now the total power being dissipated by the circuit is simply the sum of the individual power dissipations. And mathematically if you take your current where power equals voltage times current. So 60 volts times 2 amps is going to equal 120 watts of power. If you come over here to your individual power dissipations and add them up, 40 watts 
plus 80 watts is going to equal 120 watts of power being dissipated. It's simple, it's, it's straightforward. Uh, there shouldn't be any mystery in your mind for toward this. So individual resistance, individual uh, voltage drops, therefore individual power dissipation, all with a common current in a series circuit. And here's an example of finding total power. You can figure it out individually or if you know what your total voltage is and you know what your total uh, resistance is, you can calculate your, your total current and then come up with your total power. So multiple ways of coming to the same conclusion. All right, resistance isn't the only thing you put into series. If you've owned a transistor radio, pardon me, transistor radio, if you've owned a, a Walkman, if you've owned, owned a, a, a Discman, anything in the last 30 years that took AA batteries, and you notice those batteries are put in in opposite ways, you are putting batteries in series. Batteries placed in series can have two different characteristics. They can be series aiding. So the polarities are connected, so current will flow in one direction. So you're going to have all right. So you're always pushing from the negative, attracting to the positive, pushing from the negative, attracting to the positive. All right. This is your typical series battery setup and of course they that voltage is added to give you your total voltage that is a series aiding voltage series opposing well Here's three batteries, two of which, or one of which is put in in a series opposing. That means you've got 1.5 volts of potential energy forcing that way. And I'm talking AA batteries here. 1.5 volts of current wanting to flow that way with another... 1.5 volts wanting to uh, go that direction. Well, basically, two of these batteries are going to cancel each other out. So instead of in a series aiding situation where you would end up with 4.5 volts total, in this situation, you end up with 1.5 volts total. Because you're canceling out two of your, your voltages or two sets of potential energy. So that's, that's the whole thing of a series aiding or a series opposing voltage. Okay, schematically we're looking at it like this. Here we have a series aiding uh, situation where current is going to flow in one direction and you've got, let's see here, you've got 8 volts and 6 volts or a total of 14 volts, 2 ohms resistance, so 1 point, or pardon me, you've got 7 amps total current flowing nice and happy all one direction. In this case you have 6 volts of potential going that direction 8 volts of potential going that direction. Well 
your actual potential difference at this point is now just 2 volts because 6 volts is going to get canceled out. So in this situation you got 2 volts, 2 ohms, only 1 amp of actual current flow. And it's going to be that going that direction only only with 2 volts of force being applied essentially. Now, you never know what kind of unknown you're going to end up with when you start getting thrown uh, problems thrown at you. Um, the best thing to do when you're working through problems in series circuits is look for what you have the most information of on. Uh, so remember, if current is known for one component in the circuit, it's known for all the components in the circuit. If current is unknown, well, you might have a voltage and a resistance for a single resistor. You may have an individual power drop for a resistor. Anything you can do to reach current or uh, total resistance. You know, current is your is your common denominator. Let's see if we've got something here. Um, of course, you've got a known voltage drop, and you've got total voltage, so you know that your voltages are add. So if you've got VT equals R1 plus, oops, V at R1 plus V at R2 plus V at R3, So if you know what your total is and you're just missing one of these guys, all you got to do is subtract those guys from your total. It's kind of simple. It's a lot of problem solving. Um, I know for a fact that your discussion questions are going to be talking about relationships. So you have to think about the relationship between two resistances. You know, one may be twice as large as the next, but you're not given a, a value of the resistors. You're just given a total value. Um, so think about these things and, and remembering the, the characteristics of a series circuit. Series circuit, total resistance is equal to the sum of the resistors. Current is constant. Total voltage is equal to the individual voltage drops. Total power dissipation is equal to the individual resistor power dissipation. Now here comes a fun part that goes in most of the schematics and it's basically a schematic uh, uh, a schematic designation. And that is the ground connection in electrical and electronic systems. Now there may be a physical ground connection and I'll be told there's a symbol for earth ground, a symbol for a chassis ground, where all the pieces in the chassis are referenced to a single, single ground point, but not necessarily earth ground, or a common ground. Ground is assumed to have your zero volt point, and it is assumed to be your reference point. In the the, the uh, systems I've been showing you here with the with the series circuit, the black terminal, the reference terminal, is considered to be ground. Uh, and another thing, there the use of these is inconsistent as heck. Sometimes guys will use common ground. Sometimes they'll use chassis ground where they where they mean a common ground. And most often you're going to see earth ground, the symbol for earth ground applied as your ground no matter what. So while there are three different symbols for grounds, the most commonly used one is the earth ground symbol even though it's being incorrectly used. Okay, all voltages are measured with respect to ground. 
with respect to the ground symbol. So that is a common return and a measurement point. It's also a way to shortcut things. Instead of drawing a circuit complete to negative, well, if negative is connected to ground and you see point A here connected to ground, well, that means it's the same as connecting those two points together. But you don't actually have to do it schematically. Okay, but these two, two circuits here are equivalent as far as these ground points go, except for this ground point. All of a sudden, we've put a measurement reference point on the positive side of our power source, which means all of a sudden our negative lead on our meter is going to be at a higher reference than our negative lead on our meter or pardon me, then our positive lead on our meter, which means our measurement is going to turn out to be negative. So for example, in this situation, you're connecting your voltmeter positive to the positive side and you're connecting your negative to the negative side here and you're going to read a total voltage drop of 30 volts. However, come over here and some joker has given you a ground point on the positive side, but that ground point means you measure the negative side of your meter to the higher point and the positive side of your meter to the lower point, which means you're going to read a total voltage drop of minus 30 volts. And each of your subsequent measurements are going to be read in the negative. So just by placing the schematic symbol, telling me to reference my measurements from this point, we're suddenly measuring negative voltages. So bring the camera back up here. And Reconnect that guy, turn that guy back on. I don't really believe I'm sitting at 5.27 volts there. But I might be. It's been sitting there getting pretty warm, so things can change. All right. This is the standard configuration where my the positive side of my meter is connected to the voltage input, basically set up right there and the negative side is connected to the negative side of the battery. So that would be equivalent of this guy here. And I'm reading 5.15 volts. Now take it to the equivalent of this guy. Whoops. where I'm given a ground point schematically. So I have to reference from the positive side. Well, that simply means that the negative side of my meter and the positive side of my meter have just swapped places. There's my reference point right here. And while the circuit itself hasn't changed, my voltage drops have remained the same in the absolute value. However, the polarity changes because of the point of reference. Right here.
Okay, earlier you saw the effect of an open in a series circuit. Okay, what happens when a series circuit gets opened? Well, I'll, I'll open it by pull, just pulling a resistor out. Um, well, I don't have my current meter set up here, do I? Yeah, I do. Just need to get it turned on. There we go. Yeah, let's put that that resistor back into the circuit and make sure that my current meter is up and running. And make it not yet. There we go. There we go. There's my complete circuit. You see I've got good current. My voltage remains the same. However, I open that circuit up once again by opening the leg of a resistor or opening a resistor. There's no current flow. Now, I'm still measuring my absolute voltage because I'm sitting across my battery right now or my voltage source. But say instead I was going to measure across measure the voltage across two of the resistors. Well, there's no current flow, so I can't measure any voltage across the resistors. Not till I restore a path for current to flow. Open that up again. Okay, still no path for current to flow, but what happens? Whoops. When I hook up to that open resistor. You see, I now have a path for current to flow, or pardon me, I have a path to measure the voltage still. But I still have no current flow. All right, let's. I have effectively, in my circuit, put an open here. I've got my meter connected to the positive side there, and I essentially have my voltage meter connected here but there's still no place for voltage to flow, so I'm just measuring the voltage across those two points. It doesn't matter that I'm not, I'm on one side of the resistor here and I'm on this side of the resistor here, because there's no room, no place for current to flow, all I can do is measure the potential difference. So instead of reading a voltage drop, I'm reading the total available voltage. All right, and here we go. I'm now measuring the voltage on this side of the resistor. Now I'll move my lead to the other side of the resistor. And you see it doesn't change because there's no current flow. Because there's no current flow, there can't be a, a voltage drop across the resistor. All I can see is the potential energy that would cause current to flow. And so, once again, you're not going to see anything changing. Now as soon as I hook it back up and allow current to flow again. You see that 4.88 just dropped off by about 0.5 volts in that range, 0.53 volts to be exact, because that's the voltage drop across the 1K ohm resistor in that circuit. So, with current flow, without current flow. All you're reading is the potential difference as opposed 
to the actual voltage drop. And that's what they're demonstrating here in this in this graphic. In this graphic we see we've got zero volts of voltage drop because once again current can't flow because of the open and we're reading the entire voltage source out at these two points. As soon as we reconnect well, as soon as we reconnect here, we won't read anything on a voltmeter across two points of the same potential. But if we were to connect the meter there, we would then read the voltage drop across that guy. Okay, so with the open, total voltage still present, even though there's no current. The voltage source we're reading has the same potential difference. It's It hasn't changed. Just like your wall outlet. It's sitting there as an open circuit, but it still has 120 volts of potential energy. It's not till you connect an appliance or something and allow current to flow that anything happens. So remember, voltage does not move. It is just your potential difference. It is your force. It is sitting there waiting for you to give it a path in order to push on something, another charge, to cause electrons to flow. Voltage itself does not move. Okay, short circuits. Well, a short circuit in a series circuit is going to cause a change in resistance, a change in the total R. So your total resistance will change. If resistance goes down because of a short circuit is going to act like a hard piece of wire and current will always follow the path of least resistance, so R goes down, what's going to happen to current? Well, your current is going to increase. What's going to happen to your voltage drops? Well, if your current increases, your individual voltage drops at the non-shorted portions is going to increase. So let's take a look. How does, how does that work? Well, right now I'm sitting at 0.48 milliamps or 480 microamps. And my voltage drop across R0 through R2 is sitting at 4.35 volts. What happens instead of opening R1, we short R1? Well, our current just jumped up to... Uh, 0.53 or 530 microamps and our voltage drop across R0 through R2 just jumped up by half a volt because all of a sudden the 1k ohm resistor is no longer there it's a hard piece of wire so my total resistance instead of sitting at 10.2 or whatever it was it just dropped down to 9.2 kilo ohms. So I lost 1,000 ohms in the circuit. And this is the result. If I try to measure voltage across R1, we find there is no voltage across R1. It is the same potential. It's a hard piece of wire. Yet there is a voltage drop everywhere else. So with a short circuit, there was no voltage drops at all because there was no path for current to flow. Or with an open circuit, there was no path for current to flow. With a short circuit, you still have a current path, but all your characteristics change because your resistance changes. So there's your difference between open and short circuits in a series circuit. All right. 
So when troubleshooting a series circuit containing three or more resistors, remember the component whose voltage changes in the opposite direction of the other components is your problem child. So if you've got a, a resistor working on shorting out or working on opening up, the, the voltage changes are going to go in opposite directions from the guys that are working properly. If you have no voltage drops whatsoever in any of the, the resistors, you know that uh, you've got an open circuit somewhere, whether it's a broken wire, an open resistor, whatever. As long as you got current flow and you're, you're still measuring voltages across resistors other than the total potential, then you've, uh, you've got a, a short as opposed to an open. And that's about all I have for uh, series circuits, at least for this week. Uh, next week, we'll be starting to talk about parallel circuits, and the week after that, we'll talk about series parallel circuits. But in the meantime, read Chapter 4, do your discussion questions, uh, do your Chapter 4 exercise. Don't forget, you get to do your exercises multiple times. Uh, if All you have to do is make sure you, you're getting them in before the due dates. Otherwise, if you're turning in at the due date, you don't get a second chance. Uh, the test is the only thing that there's no second chances on. So that's about it. I'll talk to you next time. You guys have a good week. And don't forget, Wednesday nights, in the office as normal. So y'all be good. Bye.